Spring provides lots of different services for the beans that it manages. In particular, it provides lifecycle management and the ability to affect other beans in the container in a common way. If you want, for example, uh, to be notified of when the application uh, context is created or when your bean itself is put into production and created uh, or when the bean is destroyed, there are a couple of different ways of doing this. You can use the initializing bean interface, implement that in your, in your bean and you'll be given a callback method after property set. That method will be called whenever the bean is finished being configured by the container but before it's made available to everybody. You can use the disposable bean interface to get a callback right before the bean is about to be destroyed. Usually, by default, this corresponds to the destruction of the application context. If you don't want to implement an interface and thus copy your code to uh, the Spring Framework types, you can use the JSR250 at post construct and at pre destroy annotations on methods in your bean. These methods will be uh, invoked in the same way that the methods on initializing bean and disposable bean would have been invoked. Uh, and at the same time. If you want even more state, if you really want a stateful component that has a life cycle and that can be uh, start, started and stopped uh, and queried for state, you can use the smart life cycle interface. This is a more advanced interface, but it can be very co convenient to know about it, especially if you have something that needs to be available or that needs to cooperate with other beans in the context and you need to be able to query it for its availability. Let's take a look at managing life cycle using some of these different approaches and apply that to a hypothetical astronaut object. Our astronaut has a very fixed mission. He has to get up into space and then land on the moon. Uh, these map very nicely to sort of the beginning and the end of the mission. So I've created a at post construct method that will be invoked whenever uh, this bean is ready to go and given a chance to validate its state. In that post construct method, you can have uh, state checking, checking the dependencies that were provided for the bean. In this case, there are none, but it's a very useful facility. Then there's add pre-destroy, which is called whenever the bean is taken out of uh, service. Usually this corresponds to the destruction of the application context. We could have achieved the same effect by creating our bean and implementing the initializing bean and disposable bean interfaces. Uh, in this case, disposable bean, disposable bean brings down the public void destroy method. And then initializing bean brings down the public void after property set method. And the logic in these two different callback methods is the same as we had in our annotation driven example earlier. Now let's take a look at using the smart lifecycle. It's got a little bit more to it. It's a little bit more sophisticated uh, and it imposes a little bit more of a burden on the developer. However, uh, you can see it provides a lot of functionality. So you get callbacks for both start and stop as expected. Uh, and then you get questions, you get to answer questions like, is this bean to be automatically started when the container starts? In this case, we can just say no. Um, and then, of course, if it's not automatically started, then it's up to the programmer to actually start the bean by calling the start method. You can answer questions like, is this thing running? Is it still going? Should, it, should we just destroy it or you know, cancel out references to it? Or is somebody still using it? If we wanted to order it and you know, specifically force it to be before all the other beans in the context, you could specify an integer for a phase value. We're not taking advantage of that. We don't care in what order we uh, have this bean created as long as it is. And then finally, we have the uh, stop method. The stop method here is uh, analogous to the stop method we had before, but this method in turn also takes a runnable, which you can provide to provide any kind of cu custom destruction behavior. Uh, so when the application is destroyed, you want to be able to do tear down for your state and your objects and so on, do that in here.